Hello there and welcome back to Let's Play Trails in the Sky, uh, the, Le the Legend of Heroes, Trails in the Sky the Third. I am the RN Genius, but you may call me Eric, and in the last episode we finished up with Golden Road, Silver Road. We finished up with Chapter 3. Um, we fought the boss in the Silver Road, who was Kevin, associated with five of the some chariot wagons with skulls, and well, that was a tough boss fight with Reese. Um, with Reese, Chloe, Josette, and Joshua, it was. Afterward, we um, all came together again and had a little chat with our friend, the Schwarzritter. Um, also, like, Joshua, w once he said, oh, so that's the Schwarz uh, Schwarzritter, he, he said, like, three dots, as, which looked like he was able to recognize that he looks, like, f from his bodily physique, exactly like Löwe. But, well, okay. That's one thing. Also, what I dislike about Kevin right now is that he uh, likes to keep, well, his thoughts to himself, even though they're all in the same boat. I don't understand why he does that. We will figure that out probably when I hit the button here, where we get a flashback into his old, into his childhood again. But, um, I don't, he knows something, and I want to know what it is, and I would appreciate if he shared that information with everyone. At least his squire, right? So that we can take part in it as well, but... Oh, well, we're gonna see. We're gonna see. Alright, let's continue. Kevin Graham of the 543rd class of trainees. In the name of the God is above, I hereby appoint you a squire of the Zeptian Church. I humbly accept my appointment. I pledge to offer my soul to the God is above, and both body and blood to her church on earth. Very good. It is exceeding, exceedingly rare for one at your age to be appointed to this position. I can only assume your aptitudes and training achievements warranted it. May you strive to be a worthy guardian of the goddess's sacraments and her lo as her loyal and devoted servant. <laughs> Ain't selling it. Look at you. Well, if it isn't Kevin! I see you managed to avoid having our promotion rejected by the top brass. Splendid, splendid! Instructor, I really can't thank you enough for all you've done for me. I never dreamt I would have an actual would have an actual dominion supervising my training. Ha! Huh, how sweet of you to say. Hard to believe you're the same boy who waltzed up before the congregation of, for the sacraments, shouting, "Make me a knight, please!" <laughs> I'd appreciate it if you ch if you chuck that memory back into the furthest reaches of your mind. Thank you. Oh, but how could I? Had I missed your groveling, I never would have taken an interesting uh, interest in you in the first place. And not in a million years would I have thought you were rel related to Rufina. You could have asked her to take you on as her pupil before resorting to such drastic measures, you silly boy. W well, I had my reasons. Let's leave it at that. Ha, huh, very well. It doesn't matter at this point anyway. Congratulations. You're now a dog of the church, just like the rest of us. It's good to have you on board. Thank you. I'm not sure that's the most reassuring metaphor to be used on new recruits, though. You might scare some of them right off. Please, you're not going to... to, to, to you're not trying to position yourself as some sweet, doughy-eyed thing, are you? Besides, I think it's a perfectly apt description for us. We go around sniffing, uh, sniffing out sacraments wherever they may be, tearing through the throats of the heretical fools who are enamored with them all, in, uh, with them all the while. Can you spot the difference? Come on, instructor. I'm used to you at this point, so I don't really care if you call me a dog. But, but you are if I call you. Uh, but you are if. But you care if I call your beloved Rufina one, don't you? Not to worry, Kevin. I can read between the lines well enough. Well, did you? Did I guess right? Uh, I, I owe her a lot, but I, I wouldn't call her my beloved. She's just like a big sister to me, that's all. You're making it sound like I... Like you what, exactly? Huh. R Rufina! 
I, I thought you were in Ramaferia on a mission. Ha! <laughs> I was, but I tried to finish as quickly as possible so I could be back for your appointment ceremony. I'm so proud of you, Kevin. It's amazing just how fast you've grown. Now you're a full-fledged adult, like me. Wow, thanks for going out of your way to come here. I'm not sure I deserve to be called an adult yet, though. I've got a whole lot of work ahead of me if I want to be, a ha be half the night the two of you are. Oh my, how modest of you. By the way, have you let Reese know about all of this yet? Not yet, I'm planning to write her tonight. She's been real mad at me ever since I decided to come to Arteria, though. Hopefully this will cheer her up a bit. There's not much else I can do to make up with her sh short of going home. Perhaps we should do that together at some point if we can find the time. Oh, and while I have the chance, thank you so much for looking after him all this time, Ain. You've given up so much of your free time and I really do appreciate it. Think nothing of it. It proved quite a fun way to kill time. He has a fair amount of potential in combat arts and thought maturgy too. It's a shame all his skills are on the practical side of things, however. His academic side is less than stellar. Oh, I had this feeling in the pit of my stomach that may be the case. <laughs> oh, right. I gotta get going. <clears throat> <clears throat> God damn it. <clears throat> I wish I ke didn't keep on swearing. I'm sorry. I take it back. I have to pick up my new room key and medal for the general affairs guys. Sorry, I'll tell, talk to you later. Ah. Hmm. What's this? You look so concerned. Feeling guilty because he followed you into such a dangerous line of work. Not at all. That was completely up to him and him alone. I would never try to dictate his life choices. It's just that... I think he'll make a fine night, personally. He checks all the boxes, he's got the potential, he's got the determination. All in all, I can't see why you're so proud of him. And, and, call it a hunch, but... I wouldn't be so surprised if he... If the stigma manifested in him just like it has in you? Well, I'm impressed. I don't... Th I didn't think you could sense that... that of others if you didn't possess one yourself. Yet, one more reason to feel frustrated that you aren't a Dominion. Ha. <laughs> I know we're friends, but there's no need for all the flattery. My combat and thaumaturgy abilities are average at best. I wouldn't be cut out for the job at all. I'm grateful enough to have been promoted to squi from Squire tonight. That's the upper limit for someone with my lack of potential. If only you thought th saw things the way I do. Someone with average at best abilities couldn't have handled our Ouroboros case half as well as you did. Fighting off a man of that, report, of that reported strength to a swift enough conclusion would be a pretty feather in anyone's cap. It was just my luck that we both came to an understanding. As far as Kevin goes, he wouldn't need to rely on luck. His potential for growth extends further than I'll ever be able to go. But he has one weakness holding him back. That poor boy is just far too kind. So kind, in fact, that I can see him driving himself into a corner because of it in one day. The Dark Stigma. She was talking about an encounter with Löwe, by the way. That is something I was told in the comment section. Because in second chapter you could have had Kevin and Löwe have a conversation about Rufina at one point. So he does know her and they have fought in the past. That looks like... <sighs> oh. 
it's in. Prince Oliver. Now, this is a surprise. Don't think this is a dream, at least. Indeed, it is not. I would be overjoyed to share a sweet date with Shira in my dreams. One with a fine drinking companion, not so much. Ha! <laughs> yeah, this is real, all right. Still, doesn't Shira count as a drinking companion, too? In a way, it's fine to be drunk with the joy of her company, but it is very much the opposite to be drunk with alcohol involved. That's one of the most important lessons I learned during my stay in Liberal. Ha! Huh, truer words have never been spoken. But alright, enough playing around. You guys mind filling us in on just what kind of situation we've gotten ourselves into? We shall we shall make with uh, we shall make with the embraces and tearful greetings afterward. Honestly, you two really are something special. You'd think you'd be a little shaken finding yourselves in somewhere as unnatural as this out of nowhere. Huh. This is quite the pickle. I appreciate that it may be hard to believe, but that is the situation we find ourselves in at this present time. If we are to try and find a way out, we'll need to accept that. Oh, Müller, my sweet, sweet rose-kissed muse, ever pure and free of thorns, you misunderstand me. I have long accepted our current predicament as reality. Then why do we look so... why do you look so deep in thought? Need you even ask? Perhaps my life's toughest decision lies ahead of me. Before me, I find Joshua, Princess Claudia, Tita, and Josette. Then there's Julia, and even a new face, Reese. Just whom shall I gather into my arms like a warm blanket and exchange sweet nothings in celebration first? Ah. <sighs> <laughs> oh, only you. Uh, Joshua. You were pulling my leg when you said this guy was the Erebonian prince, right? Huh. Hard as it is to believe, he... is? Putting my deeply earnest dilemma aside for the time being? It, sound as it sounds as though you've been making some headway in unraveling the mysteries behind this place. Naturally, I would be more than honored to help with that. But first, you've got a few questions you need to ask, right? I sure, I know I sure do. I should have known you would be thinking along the same lines. You're exactly right. Fine by me, what do you want to ask? Do you think you finally, you figured something out? That's what I want to find out. First, I want to ask about that ghost you've encountered in here. Ask away. If I remember correctly, the first time you met her was on her balcony in Gransall, yes? In Gransell Castle, yes? Indeed it was. She gave us the key that allowed us to eventually find and rescue you. That was the first time she appeared to us as a ghost, but I don't believe it was the first time she directly communicated with you, was it, Father? Don't think so, anyway. When Reese and I first arrived here, we heard a strange voice talking to us. We didn't have a clue who it belonged to at the time, but I think it was that was probably her, too. As do I. So, at first, she existed here only as a voice, but she's gradually started showing up with a body, too. I know that's a weird way to put it, but if it's true, it backs up what that man in black said last time we saw him. Yeah, he said the Lord of Phantasm had stolen most of her power, right? He kept referring to her as the Hermit, and Master of the Hollow Garden, too. Plus, the inscription of that monument behind us has the Hermit's Garden written on it. I think all of us here can connect that, the dots just fine. Agreed. It's reasonable to conclude that this very garden is connected to her in some way. That's true. Makes sense to me. It also explains why this place is kind of comfy compared to the other weird field uh, fiend-infested places in Phantasma. Hmm, feels like we're getting closer to the truth with every new re revelation. By the sounds of it, she's been in Phantasma for a while now, possibly since the beginning. But then she had her power stolen by the Lord of Phantasma and ended up without a body. Since then, she's been trying to help us to the best of her abilities and guide us forward. 
If we assume all of that to be true, maybe the monuments scattered throughout here are connected to her somehow, too. They seem to exist for that same purpose, guiding us forward. I think there's, m there's one more thing in our possession that's connected to her as well. That cube, Kevin. You think so? Unfortunately, your guess is as good as your guess is as good as mine on exactly what that cube is. That being said, I think the odds of it being connected to her somehow are as high as everything else on the list so far. Well, what do you think? Honestly, I'm impressed. You've done a remarkable job of making sense of the situation. You've uh, you've only just arrived. Still, if we assume all that to be true, then there's something else we should be going as we should be doing as we keep moving forward. Helping to her restore her power, I assume. That way we should be able to ask her what else she knows about the land we're in. Got it in one. I get this impression that if we don't, we won't stand a chance against those two. We'll find ourselves up against the wall at some point. You may well be right. Well, leaving her aside for the time being, I do have one final thing I'd like to ask. Huh? What else is there to cover? It concerns that Lord of Phantasma you kept mentioning, actually. Put simply, you wouldn't happen to have any idea as to who they are, would you, Kevin? Hmm. Why me? Well, from my perspective, they're awfully fixated on you. They seem to know about Reese's diseased sister as well. Then there's the fact they are even able to summon devils from the church's texts. It all seems to be pointing to you too, and you in particular. Hmm, I can see why you'd ask, I guess. Unfortunately for you, though, I got nothing. If anything, I'd say, uh, say they seem to be an enemy of the Grasritter as a whole, rather than just me. Hmm... Hmm, I suppose that's possible. I wouldn't be surprised if an organization like that had more than their fair share of enemies. No offense, of course, I have plenty of enemies myself. Try not to sound like it's something worth boasting about. Anyway, even if we've co connected some dots, we'll have to save the mystery to save the mystery behind who our enemies are for another day. Maybe we can get more information out of them the next time we see them, but until then, we don't have enough to work with. Right. Next time one of them shows up, we'll have to see what we can force out of them. So, that about wraps things up for now. If so, we should probably get ready to head out again. We're on the same plane number... F we're on the plane number four, and if the previous planes are anything to go by, it's gonna be tough. Kevin? Hmm, what's up? Did you have something else you wanted to add? No. It's just that I'm not feeling very well, so I'm going to sit the next plane out. What? I'm sorry for the trouble, everyone, but please look out, out for him on my behalf. He shouldn't cause you too much trouble, but as I'm sure you know, he can be a little careless at times. Reese! Wait a sec! Huh. Are you not are you not gonna go after her? I uh sorry, I'll be back in a minute. Reese Wait a sec Hmm <laughs> What's with you all of a sudden? Oh, I know. Are you feeling left out because I'm the only one you know here and everyone else is talking? Sorry, Reese. Probably wasn't fun to have a, to sit through the whole happy reunion deal. I should have noticed earlier. Really, I've been pretty intense and, 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 ah, and, and insensitive. When are you going to stop acting? Huh? It's true that I felt a little left out for a while. You've clearly gone through so much together, and it's it's made you that much more fond of each other's uh, other in the days since. <laughs> yeah, we had some amazing times. Hard to come out the other end of stuff we did without growing closer through through it all. Watching you all, how could I not have felt lonely? How could I not have felt jealous? You've been avoiding me for the past five years, Kevin. 
The thought that you'd grow close to so many others while going out of your way to uh, out of your way to keep me out of arm's reach did make me sad. Y you know, I I didn't mean it like that, Reese. But at the same time, I was still happy you did. I knew how badly that happened. How badly what ha I knew how badly what happened to Rufina had hurt you. How you were still blaming yourself for it. I knew how you were driving yourself into a corner over it, and how you were ta taking on nothing but dirty jobs as if you were trying to punish yourself. And I couldn't confirm it for myself for sure, but I just knew the rumors that you were desperate to burn yourself out through them were true. So that's the reason. That's why, as lonely as I felt when you were off making new friends without me, I was really, really happy more than anything. Um, Reese, you do know that... Except, it turns out you haven't made any new friends at all! You're pulling the same exact thing you pulled with me on them! Every single one at arm's length! They can't get close to you! You won't get close to them! On the surface, you're a cheerful person having fun with everyone, but on the inside, you're as cold as can be! All you're doing is manipulating your own emotions so people think you're someone you're not! After watching you ever since we were re reunited, that's become plain as day to me. Huh. Huh. Man, I, I'm happy you worried about me, but you've totally gotten the wrong idea with this one. Sorry, I'm, I'm good at a lot of things, but pretending to be someone I'm not isn't one of them. When I'm happy, you'll know about it, and when I'm mad, well, I think you know I'm not so good at hiding that either. I'm the same transparent guy I, wa I always was. Oh, I didn't say you were, weren't easy to read, for me at least. After all, I know how genuinely shaken you were by the Lord of Phantasma's message. Huh. Their words and the words of that Schwarzritter always come across as cryptic, but not to you. Deep down, you know what they're talking about. You just constantly keep it from the rest of us and try to keep us in the dark. No. Maybe you've even managed to pull the wool over my own, over, over your own eyes, too. Ah, come on now, you can't seriously... Devour the new offering presented to you and display your seal once more. You know exactly what that means, don't you? Go on! Hmm. You know what? Maybe you should sit things out for a bit. You're clearly tired. What? I get that you're as angry as you are upset with me. I think it's starting to make you jump to some really out there conclusions. And being tired uh, uh, out's only going to make it worse. Can't you see how negative your line of thinking is? You can't seriously believe all this is actually true. <sighs> I'm not saying I don't deserve all the anger. I totally do. I genuinely was busy, but at the same time, I wasn't sure how to face you if, I, if we did end up meeting either. Still, we're gonna be working together from now on, so... Enough. Huh? Ugh. Everything you're saying is just meaningless. Maybe the others don't realize that, but how dare you think of uh, think I of all people would fall for it? <laughs> I realize I'm turning my back on my duties as a squire by doing this, but I can't bear to be near you any longer. I can't stand to see the Kevin I thought I knew so empty. So... <sighs> oh. <sighs> Gavin. Ah, hey! <laughs> I'm sorry you had to see that. Don't worry about it. Is that a... is that a slap mark on your right cheek? Ah, I didn't see that. Hmm. I want to know something, Joshua. You've looked into, uh, into me a fair bit since I first stepped onto the scene, right? I have. I know that you're called the Heretic Hunter. I know that you're one of the Twelve Dominions that lead the Graalsritter. And I know you undertake the execution of sinners the Church deems most unforgivably almost single-handedly. Ha! <laughs> I figured you'd know your stuff. Wouldn't want any guys whose backgrounds you hadn't thoroughly vetted being close to your girlfriend for long, huh? I can't deny it. Still, the only people you harm are those sinners, never anyone else. So I decided that, for the time being at least, you weren't a threat to her or anyone else. Huh. I see. 
Weisman was your work too, wasn't it? Sure was. My job was to get rid of him, that's odd. That's it. Everything I did with you guys leading up to that point was to get myself into a position to get it done without him catching on. That includes helping all of you out, naturally. Yeah, I know. You must have been aware of the possibility that Estelle would be taken on board the Glorious too. You thought allowing it to happen would help you in the long run, so you kept quiet about it? Wow, now that one I'm surprised you pieced together. But yep, you're absolutely right. I figured there was a chance she might get abducted, but I did exactly nothing to stop it. All I cared about was finding out what Weissmann and you were up to. And where you were, for that matter. Couldn't use better bait for that than her. I thought so. And yet all of that doesn't change how I'm more grateful than words can express. W why is that? Because if you hadn't helped me back then, I would still be Weissmann's puppet. I would have broken with my own hands what I valued most in the whole world. world. That's a debt I'll never be able to fully repay. Oh, sweet idios, now you're just being cute. I know you're smart enough to realize that's not all why I... That's not all why I threw you a bone, right? I just wanted him off his guard enough to create the opening I needed. Helping you was the perfect way to do that. That was all there was to it. And again, that doesn't change how grateful I am to you. Knowing why you did what you did doesn't erase the gratitude I feel. Not in the slightest. <laughs> it really is just as well you end up quitting Ouroboros. You'd suck to high heaven if you were an enforcer now. <laughs> Honestly, you're totally right. If Reese is sitting on the sidelines for now, let me help you in her place. I might not be as capable of helping you as she is, but I should be able to back you up. Oh, you don't need to feel indebted to me, you know. Well, I'll take what I can get. No doubt you're worried sick about Estelle, too, so there's your gold star reason for helping out beside me. So thanks, I'm glad you've got my back. Right back to you. Alright. Who do we take along? Right now we are going to take... Uh, Tita and Chloe. Alright. And of course we're going to talk to everyone, everyone, but not right now. For the moment, I hope you enjoyed it and I hope I will be able to see you in the next episode as well in the chapter four, The Dark Stigma. I'll see you then. Bye-bye.